بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we are going to continue with infinitive and gerund in English plus covert and overt derived nominal in Arabic. Regarding the gerund and infinitive in English, we see that the gerund can stand as a subject in the sentence. So you have these two sentences, eating too much food is not good for your health. Playing basketball is very fun. Eating, playing, they stand as subjects. If you, we use also infinitive after noun in this, after the noun in the sentence. It's not good for your health to eat too much fast food. So we have the infinitive directly follows the noun in the sentence. As it appears in this sentence, it's not good for your health to eat too much fast food. It's very fun to play basketball. So we have fun, we have health. They are followed by infinitive, as you see. We use gerund directly after the preposition. I'm tired of doing the same thing over and over again every day. They are excited about attending the meeting tomorrow. So we have of, doing, about, attending, I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. She's used to driving at night. Is am are used to plus the verb plus ing and uh, this means gerund. It means يعتاد على present custom. How, however, having used plus infinitive, this refers to habit in the past. يعتاد على so if you have the verb to be plus used to, it is directly followed by gerund. We have infinitive, which is directly used after the adjective. I was surprised to see her at the party yesterday. They were anxious to meet with the president this weekend. I'm glad to meet you. So we have surprised, anxious, Glad. They are, directly, they are directly followed by infinitives. We also have the infinitive used after certain nouns. I still have a little time to talk with you tonight. They have a lot of books to read for their reading class. He doesn't have permission to use the lab computers. So we have time, books, permissions. They are followed by infinitive, as you see. The infinitive expresses purpose, okay? So if there be a purpose in the sentence, close of purpose, then we use the infinitive. I came here in order to study or to study English. We use the particle, the negative particle not before the gerund or even before the infinitive to come out with negative sentence. Not doing your homework is a big mistake. She was angry about not being invited to the reception. I decided not to go there tomorrow. Try not to be late. So as you see, the particle, the negative particle not precedes the gerund and also the infinitive. We spoke about hypothetical verbs verbs to happen in future. This is followed by the infinitive, as you know. This is forward-oriented verbs. He told us to stay home. I want you to be the best student in the class. She advised me not to take such a risk. So all the actions in these sentences refer to future actions. Uh, the verbs are forward-oriented verbs, this is the fourth category of the four categories uh, of the verbs which accept gerund and infinitive. We spoke about the emotive verbs, the aspectual verbs, the reactive verbs, and the forward-oriented verbs. Also, we use the, the gerund after the possessive pronouns. I appreciate your inviting me 
to the party. We are proud of mayors winning the first place in the race. Okay. Uh, so this is the complete explanation of the use of infinitive and gerund in English and Arabic. We spoke about uh, the modified derived nominal and overt derived nominal. أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَشْرَبَ الشَّاي أَنْ أَشْرَبَ الشَّاي This is covert derived nominal. أُحِبُّ شُرْبَ الشَّاي This is overt derived nominal. We've seen that we have big difference between these constructions in English and Arabic. So the reactive verbs of Arabic, the emotive verbs of Arabic are the same like English. They accept both overt and covert derived nominal. However, the aspectual verbs, this is in English, in English. What about Arabic? They accept only modified derived nominal or covert derived nominal. What about reactive verbs in English? They accept only gerund. However, in Arabic, both. The forward-oriented verbs. In English, they accept only infinitive. However, in Arabic, they accept both. So you have to take care once you translate. OK? Once you translate. It is not necessarily to translate literally every single word. You have to consider the structure of infinitive and to see the difference. This, uh, this means that you have to consider the meaning or the, the meaning of the verb itself and its syntactic capacity, whether it accepts infinitive or gerund. Okay? A return to the verbs in Arabic, whether the translated verb accepts Overt derived nominal or covert derived nominal. Okay? Uh, I need to terminate here in order to give you a quiz just now about or on the use of infinitive and gerund in English. Okay? That's it. Thank you.